गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन कैन यू हेयर मी Yes, sir. Your voice is so clear. Yes, sir. Good morning. Ah, uh, good morning. Are you able to see my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, can we start the presentation? Ah, uh, sir. Just uh, two minutes, sir. Uh, I'll briefly okay. introduce Fine. you, and the next one is answered. No problem. I'm starting to move. Good morning, all. Myself, Dr. S. K. Aminabi, Associate Professor in the Department of Pharmacology, and I am the chairperson for this session. It's my immense pleasure to introduce the speaker, Dr. Muthu Swami, Muthu Kumar Swami Kartikeyan. Sir, after his master degree in chemistry from Pondicherry University in the year 1991. joined csir national chemical laboratory as a csir junior research fellow in january 1992 under the supervision of professor ganesh pande to pursue his career in the area of organic synthesis using photo induced electron transfer approaches he developed carbocyclization and spirocyclization reactions after completing his phd in organic chemistry in the year 1998 developed interest in the area of chemoinformatics inspired by professor castigier and pursued this area till date he also completed master degree in management and computer science under distance education mode to enhance his research outputs and to undertake challenging large scale projects in the area of defense medicine and agriculture he has co-authored a textbook on practical chemoinformatics first of its kind to support 
skill development program of csir and also to com to complement bioinformatics degree program related to drug design he also authored about 30 research papers in this area he he holds several national and international patents in the area of chemoinformatics medicine robotics high performance computing artificial intelligence internet of things and their applications in drug discovery precision agriculture and strategic se sectors he is the recipient of voice cast award 2003 by dst new, new delhi and overseas associate award 2007 by dbt new delhi he is selected for open innovation challenge award by thomson reuters and ford x of sanford university and received 10000 dollar dollars for building and analytic platform for legal informatics handling large scale data recently he published two special issues in journal combi chem high throughput screening containing 10 articles in sequence on chemoinformatics tools for drug discovery currently he is working in the area of harvesting large scale molecular data for artificial intelligence application for cancer cure and pursuing precision agriculture applying artificial intelligence sensors and in the internet of things methods for improving crop yield through early warning system and artificial intelligence based models for predictive analytics to support farmers in collaboration with other csir laboratories the current focus of his interest is corona antiviral discovery toolkit using chemo informatics bioinformatics machine learning deep learning and artificial intelligence methods dr kartikeyan completed 30 years that is 3 decades in csir national chemics national chemical laboratory since his admission to phd program he also completed 20 years in service as a scientist at csir national chemical laboratory where he raised from csir jrf to a senior principal scientist through dedicated hard work passion for science and determination he has undertaken several challenging pro uh, projects of national and international importance in the area of medicine agriculture and defense his work and delivery is highly appreciated by drdo scientists currently exposed to hcm screener toolkit for the design of novel strategic materials used in delivery systems recently developed a patent technology to remote computing and internet of things for precision agriculture is now implemented in cs iwo chandigarh and cm eir durgapur with this brief introduction i would like to Uh, good morning uh, i missed some uh, audio issues kartikeyan sir please start your presentation sir ah oh, okay one second uh can you see my slides yes sir uh, first of all i like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak about my passion thanks madam uh, for giving a very large speech uh, i didn't expect that i feel very humble now okay so today i am going to present the role of artificial intelligence in anti cancer drug discovery so i am going to present how to use the current computer technologies to design novel molecule for cancer why cancer the cancer is uh, mostly dead disease today and if it is diagnosed at the very later stage uh, it is almost certain that survival is Uh, irreversible because the early you detect the early you diagnose early you treat the chances of uh, survival 
and uh, full cure is possible. So people are using today the technologies to uh, detect the cancer and start treating them. There are several cases um, and people fully cured from cancer. So I am uh, uh, two years back, we proposed this project to government of India and we asked for funding uh, to support this research. So there are about 400 terabytes of data available about uh, this anti-cancer uh, treatment, uh, diagnosis, etc. So we thought that in India, especially in India, uh, people are, uh, because of the exposure to pollution, harsh environment, weathers, chemicals, and food habits, smoking, drinking, consumption of tobacco, etc. There are unorganized self-medication, etc. This leads to a uh, huge, uh, large number of uh, cases of uh, incidences of cancer in India. So uh, many times, because of the cost of treatment, fear, social and psychological factors, people don't disclose uh, they have this uh, cancer as a disease because they feel uh, it's very bad. Because of this psychological factor and harsh environment and habits, uh, India uh, become, you know, hotspot in cancer. Because of this uh, today COVID pandemic situation, uh, the uh, cancer and related diseases are not uh, very, uh, you know, highlighted today. So now it is time for us to go back. Anyway, we have to live with the COVID. But now we have to go back and see the people who are suffering from these diseases. They are very vulnerable to uh, even COVID. So we have to take care of people with diabetic, people with cancer. So these people are uh, very vulnerable to uh, pandemic situation. So what I am going to present is, uh, especially since it is the faculty development program or a refresher program, uh, I want to introduce uh, many people might have attended these seminars or lectures, similar ones. And I gave this type of talks uh, earlier also many times. And then uh, many people uh, in this audience also might have come across these uh, slides and topics, etc. So please bear with me. Uh, and you have two choices. One, you can interrupt me in the middle of my presentation. Uh, now I can see only the slides. I can't see the chat box or the question which you are asking. You can interrupt me and ask me the questions if you find something uh, relevant for you, important for you. Optionally, you can wait till the end of presentation. Then if time permits and if you have sufficient time, you are free to ask me. Alternatively, you can also communicate to me by email so that I will reply to you if something very important. Okay. So with this uh, brief, uh, uh, this one, I want to highlight uh, the importance of uh, drug discovery, especially for cancer. And today, the agenda for the talk would be what is artificial intelligence and how it evolved? So I was told uh, that please do not discuss about the fundamentals of AI, etc. But uh, since this is the first presentation, I took a little bit of liberty of uh, mentioning the some of the terminologies used in artificial intelligence for the benefit of uh, newcomers audience, because each and everyone can contribute in this field since people are coming with a pharmaceutical background. So uh, you can take help of computer people to you can put your knowledge to uh, develop this field. And I also slightly touch upon uh, the new topic, uh, which is very, very important. And uh, in India, we have to implement this uh, sustainable development goal. And uh, what is the role of, uh, you know, AI in sustainable development goal, especially in health context, I want to touch upon because there is an opportunity for each one of you who are the participants here. Then I will uh, speak about uh, cancer, uh, very, very important because it is a global concern. And then um, artificial intelligence, then how we are using this chem informatics drug discovery toolkit and especially the open source toolkits uh, to assemble all these open source toolkits to build a software like platform where you can uh, use this toolkit as a problem solving environment for the drug discovery, especially anti-cancer drug discovery. 
So I am working in this field for last 25 years. Basically, I am an organic chemist. I was, as Madam mentioned, I, I did synthetic organic chemistry PhD, where I used to synthesize novel molecules. There are about 18 steps synthesis. So you start with the kilograms uh, and then end up with milligrams. So we, I handled all these things. And then I realized that, OK, with the synthetic background, can we design a molecule? Once you design the molecule, you know how to synthesize it. So even you can take the help of computer to suggest what are the synthetic routes for making those novel molecules. Once you know the, instead of making molecules and without knowing its properties, how to know the properties of the molecules before it is synthesized, especially uh, uh, physicochemical properties, bioactivity, toxicity, et cetera. If you can predict even before synthesis, it will be very useful for that. Uh, objective, we need to have uh, artificial intelligence, big data, high performance computing. There are so many informations, so much information is available in internet, patent, publications related to uh, these molecules and how these molecules uh, interact with the biological systems and what is their outcome. All this information is available in the literature. Now we have to learn from the literature uh, what is the molecule uh, performance with respect to disease of interest, then you can design the uh, good molecule because you know uh, what is bad molecules. So by learning from good and bad, you now the computer can predict what is the uh, good molecule likely to be a potential, uh, potential treatment for cancer. So this is what uh, I am going to present today. And then here some terminologies are there. What is machine learning, deep learning, uh, artificial intelligence? These are the new terms. Uh, last two, three years, it is uh, very widely um, you know, presented across the globe. So now uh, I am going to introduce for these uh, participants. So how we used these data, terminologies, methods, uh, and then we actually built a tool that is actually that's why we are i'm going to present the practical approach for designing antiviral uh, anti-cancer agents and we extended this anti-cancer uh, toolkit for antiviral agents also because of covid we need that antiviral agents so uh, as i mentioned cancer is very deadly disease if you di diagnose early then you can treat fully Okay, so early detection and treatment is always recommended uh, for the increased survival of uh, complete cancer cure. Cancer is highly prevalent in India, as I mentioned, because of the habit, uh, pollutant, and unorganized self medication, etc. So, uh, there is a, a global uh, cancer estimate is very high, and mortality cases are rapidly, uh, rap rapidly developing world also. So uh, I can say that uh, there is a, uh, I can uh, actually recommend, please uh, try to uh, complement this area. There are several type of cancers uh, across all this uh, globe. So we, uh, in our study, we took top 10 cancers. Okay, so that I will mention that uh, why and how we are handling that. So uh, if uh, possible, I will share um, some of the slides uh, with the participants because uh, right now you may not be able to uh, read and understand each and every slide so you can go through them at your leisure and um, you know i was even asked to give uh, uh, this multiple choice questions etc it may help you these introductions okay so now i am going to uh, focus especially the ai for uh, cancer there is a uh, the cancer genome atlas which is about 400 terabits of data is already available so for computer programming uh, computer uh, modeling we need input data so until unless we have input data of the patient and how the patient responded to the chemical which is a drug we can't do actual learning so for uh, this is what i am going to highlight until unless you have a sufficient data you can't do the modeling what is artificial intelligence? So artificial intelligence is not new. You can see that the word artificial intelligence was coined in 1956, and then they used for uh, you know using used for uh, recognizing the objects, sounds, etc., uh, etc. Et Today it is used everywhere. 
okay the, today you go to amazon buy something then amazon will suggest you what you might like if you go and watch some online movies and then next movie they will recommend to you based on your taste and interest so like this today it is uh, you know uh, it is there in uh, it become a household for example alexa alexa tell me what is the weather so it is ai is coming to our house voice to voice uh, recognition etc so let us uh, just uh, i'll spend a few minutes to say that ai is not new so uh, it is there from 1941 uh, as long as as soon as the computer was developed then ai actually people started using this ai for gaming uh, for example uh, you know game actually the computer's uh, intelligence were used for gaming purpose later it went uh, it ai is a science 1995 then they started using uh, for learning uh, reasoning knowledge representation etc and then in 2006 you can see that ai is used for face recognition nowadays if you see the uh, multinational uh, companies they use uh, you know uh, your fingerprints and face recognition uh, uh, etc okay so now uh, you know that now self driving cars are there defense is using ai for uh, multiple purposes now you can see that uh, where the ai is used ai is used everywhere okay i will focus only on the uh, healthcare aspects we are also using ai for defense we are using ai for agriculture how to increase the crop yields by understanding the weather parameters and the environment in which the plant is growing so where we used robotics artificial intelligence data to help the farmers uh, you know we actually grown the plant we have grown the plant seed to seed calculations so you put one seed that one seed become how many seeds whether it is going to be 100 seeds or it is going to be 50 seeds or zero seeds so what are the factors increased uh, responsible for increasing the uh, number of seeds seed to seed so this type of uh, then what are the, we are trying to identify pinpoint the factors responsible for Uh, crop yield that is also very very important topic in many uh, meetings and conferences we presented this work we also got funding for uh, artificial intelligence for precision agriculture and then uh, we also got funding for ai for defense where we need to identify the strategic chemicals which is uh, more ai performance like uh, explosives propellant pyrotechnics etc so we used this ai so here i will focus only on artificial intelligence how it is used for identifying uh, cancer specific molecule because cancer is you know it is a very uh, personalized medicine context because unlike uh, our uh, treatment of fever and other things where generic medicines are used uh, for example paracetamol uh, you know uh, is used for uh, uh, specific things and anybody can use paracetamol whereas this cancer is specific to uh, there are several complexity involved in cancer disease so we have to be Uh, specific selective so identifying those specificity and selectivity with respect to type of disease type of molecule is very very important where ai can play an important role so uh, as we know that ai is used everywhere uh, healthcare retail manufacturing and sports and uh, there are several publications now uh, available role of artificial intelligence in drug discovery specifically so people are using this ai for uh, these uh, domains Uh, now uh, i want to uh, emphasize that people uh, should go through this particular article uh, i will uh, you please go through the full article then you will understand the role of ai in drug discovery so i strongly recommend that uh, one uh, the participants should go through this uh, article which is recently uh, published okay then there is a textbook is also made uh, means published recently uh, this year or i think Uh, late last part of last uh, last year somewhere in the end they made this uh, they made this available uh, artificial intelligence in drug discovery uh, this is book i wanted to write some several years back but uh, now it is already available it is a compiled volume but if at all if i write i will write with respect to how to uh, you know develop practical practical ai for drug discovery i will uh, focus on how you can do it by reading that book how you can um, build your own toolkit for uh, designing novel molecules now you can see that there are several publications uh, coming up uh, with respect to artificial intelligence in diagnosis of cancer modeling of cancer 
analysis of cancer uh, and clinical data management, clinical data analysis. Uh, then they are uh, used for image processing to know the severity of uh, cancer, especially with respect to breast cancer, etc. So now uh, it's also used for now because of the COVID situation, people are using AI extensively uh, in uh, COVID situation also. Anti anti COVID or anti viral drug discovery also it is being used. You can uh, why why I'm showing this some of the publications uh, very recently published with respect to AI in drug discovery. Now uh, AI in healthcare as a whole when you look into that it is used for detection of the disease and it is also used for making decision making because uh, now we are taking large data large populations people can look the data in different angle whereas the machine can help uh, to find pinpoint uh, to take what type of treatment should be given etc so a is used for this type of access so uh, I kindly uh, request all of you to mute your mic until unless you have a question for this presentation. Okay, uh, so please, no offense. Okay, so now I want to spend one or two minutes on a role of artificial intelligence uh, achieving the self de uh, sustainable development goal. This is also a very, very important topic. Under sustainable development goal, you can see that, uh, you know, health is uh, main uh, goal number three is about health. Okay, so there is a po no poverty, uh, inequality. There are several uh, things are there under sustainable development goal. And one of the critical uh, thing under the uh, SDG is uh, health. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the goal number three is good health and well-being. So under this, all the drug discovery, treatment, etc., all will come under this. So uh, I uh, kindly, uh, you know, um, uh, request each and every one of you to go through this because this is going to be the future. Okay, so please, uh, because you can play an important role uh, in transforming our world, especially India needs uh, this sustainable development goal. Uh, we we have to do this. We have to implement by 2030. So it is better you uh, get exposed to. What is this? There are a lot of uh, opportunity available, funding opportunity available, both nationally and internationally. So if you can enter into this domain, maybe it will help you personally and also the uh, country. Okay. So in under these things, we are working on, uh, for example, uh, zero hunger, where agriculture comes into important play. That's why we are trying to use AI for agriculture, and we are using AI for health. Now, under NEP, uh, National Education Policy, the quality education is very, very important. So all the things are already documented in this. So you, you and AI can help in that. So even sustainable cities, environment, responsible consumption production where AI can play an important role. So people studied what is how AI can help in all these domains. Okay, There are about 17 goals and there are about 134 targets and they found based on the experts analysis and opinion it is found that AI has 134 targets it has a high impact and there are about 39, 59 targets it is uh, you know, opinion that it may have some negative impact, uh, especially with respect to because the AI is like a machine, uh, robots, etc. It may people may lose the job like that. There is a, some fear is there in that context. They make as a AI as a negative impact. But I don't believe because uh, if you are smart enough, you will never lose your job. So uh, that concern should not be there. Okay. So, it, it, it impact in global productivity, equal, equality, environmental, etc. So, pollution is very, very important today. Uh, that plastics which we throw uh, become microplastics and, uh, you know, comes back and gives a lot of health issues. So, under this sustainable development goal, all these aspects are covered. So, if we, uh, if we can, you know, uh, uh, live properly, then there is no uh, worry for health issues. Since first we pollute, for example, today, if you see the pollution that uh, burning uh, fossil fuels, and now people are going for this electric vehicle, fuel cells, where zero emission uh, is coming. So uh, then uh, actually when you uh, when you inhale those uh, toxic chemicals, automatically it spoils your health. 
so in under this context this is also very very important that uh, we need to how to reduce the uh, pollution and the exposure to pollution so that uh, it uh, actually you you will become a disease free world okay so this is the under sustainable development goal i here also they mentioned about how ai helps in healthcare sector so let us now go into the um, uh, incidence of um, uh cancer okay so these are all the little outdated slide it is up to 2010 but that you can just to, to you can see the trend the trend is very alarming it is very you know rapidly growing uh, okay. india is not left behind there are uh, india uh, india is there but unfortunately because of our societal things we this data may not be Uh, correct because people try to suppress the you know they have disease or something like that unlike other developed countries and we don't want to tell uh, that we have uh, cancer like that okay but then the fact remains so uh, the trend is going up until unless we take care we will be uh, you know um, it will be very damaging and then these are all the incidence of cancer in the world but what is uh, more dangerous is uh, the mortality rate so uh, in the undeveloped countries or under developing countries so the death is more compared to developed countries because in developed countries they diagnose first and then they actually start treating them and fully uh, they get uh, fully cured whereas in under uh, undeveloped country or under developing countries and this uh, death is very high okay now let us go into the uh, points uh, especially treatment of cancer how the cancer can be treated cancer first they do surgery remove the solid tumors and then people use radiation chemotherapy and anti neoplastic drugs uh, that cannot uh, distinguish between normal and cancerous cells there are some issues are there okay so now uh, as a data analyst as a chemist as a pharmacist uh, pharmacology pharmacology student or uh, you know uh, i will look the um, why some uh, according to me all are chemicals atom and bond why certain chemicals are called anti cancer drugs what is speciality at the chemical uh, constitution and uh, you know uh, compositions uh, structure framework etc functional group atoms bond you know how they are so i will try to see what is the chemical structure how these atoms are organized in such a way that they become specific anti cancer drug so you can see there are several type of drugs and there is several mode of uh, the type of uh, drug for example uh, these are the list of the drugs and the nature is this is a common name uh, this is what you patient uh, prescribed these things and then there is a mode of action and then what is the specification uh, specificity with respect to that particular drug as a data analyst as a chemist i will look into why this molecule is specific for this type of cancer that is very very critical uh, point until unless you make that correlation why this particular chemical or a drug is specific for this type of cancer this is a sharp question so you should ask this well, because now now let us okay this is you no know, this is prescribed drug for the specific cancer now let us go into details how i can use that knowledge for designing the future anti cancer drug so my first step would be okay go and find the cancer drug profile and what are the information available there okay so in a cancer drug profile you have chemical name mechanism of action maybe some chemical structure and therapeutic use and specificity selectivity metabolism etc and then there are some uh, these cancer drugs are actually toxic drugs okay why it is toxic because it has to kill the specifically the cancer cell not the uh, good cells okay so basically then it is a, then there is a side effects called you know it might kill some of the uh, good cells too okay so now from this uh, concept you can understand that all the drugs which is used for treatment of cancer are toxic and what we need is specificity and selectivity with respect to the type of cancer and the patient being treated and then first step is which chemical which cancer second step is 
what are the toxicity associated with that whether toxicity is more or cure is more we have to make the way and then we have to go further in details and this is the therapeutic targeting of all mark of cancer you know that there is a gene there is a protein there is a function and then there is a variation in function that is responsible for uh, this type of disease now we have to regulate the uh, functions using this small molecule as a inhibitors and then they go and interact they change the particular pathway so that you know for example methylation so uh, how to do demethylation so we have to identify there are pathways means uh, enzymes do some particular biochemical reaction within the body now we have to regulate it with the help of uh, small molecules so we need to know how to what is the uh, pathway what is the target what is the molecule responsible for uh, you know controlling that pathway so this is a complete uh, overview of what is the um, disease type of disease and then what are the specificity with respect to the targets now we have to identify specific drugs which can go and bind and give the desired effects okay so uh, i i don't want to go into details because uh, since you are coming from pharmaceutical background i don't need to give more details about it all you know is there are some molecules there are some targets there is a function the function responsible for type of cancer now if you know what molecule to Uh, prescribe so that it goes and uh, attack the particular specific target and then uh, it goes and binds and then because of the signaling and other uh, pathways we get the desired uh, characteristics okay finally we have to see the survival uh, of the uh, things uh, how to stop the uh, formation of this cancerous cells okay so inhibit the formation of cancerous cells by regulating the pathways okay so now let us go into uh, this is the another treating uh, treating cancer is very complex because uh, it involves several uh, pathways okay so uh, for several targets then we have to be specific and selective with respect to this treatment of cancer so once you get this birds eye view of there is a molecule there is a target there is a signal or there is a pathway and that is responsible for particular type of cancer now i know how to uh, which type of drug gives what type of uh, curing of cancer okay this information needs to be collected from uh, several uh, several uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of publications we have to collect all this information then only computer can learn from this data and find the specificity and selectivity okay now you know that the problem is complex collecting this information from the literature is very very challenging now i will go into the details now let us uh, to make the moment lighter i will talk about how ai in chemistry and biology and medicine okay i am going to talk about uh, how i got interest in this field when i was doing my bsc and msc i used to study about synthesis of chemicals and professor ej kore uh, that professor ej elis j kore uh, he wrote an article uh, computer synthesis uh, computer assisted organic synthesis in 1960 computer assisted design of complex organic synthesis he published in uh, science magazine science journal uh, long ago uh, and then uh, as a curious person i used to see how computer can be used for organic synthesis that is how i developed interest long ago almost 30 years back and then uh, when i came to do phd in chemistry then i thought uh, using computers for synthesis uh, of organic molecules how to predict the reactions for the synthesis of novel molecules and then eventually uh, professor ej kore uh, who published paper that uh, in 1960s on using computers for chemistry eventually he received the nobel prize okay so uh, you can go into that story so long because he is a early adopter of uh, computers for chemistry now a uh, uh, few minutes back i explained to you that uh, there is a chemical there is a disease there is a target and then this information we need to collect the chemical knowledge is uh, available uh, presented in several form in the world for example patent reports publication phd thesis text book web pages everywhere this chemical knowledge is there 
unlike other topics uh, especially in uh, organic chemistry we have to represent the chemical structures as a pictures so searching a picture in a in a literature is very very challenging so searching a chemical name is very easy like a google search you can do it okay paracetamol i can find it but then the problem with chemical knowledge is the chemical structures are uh, represented in several formats where is that okay the chemical structures are uh, represented as uh, two dimensional structures it can be called a chemical name it can have a molecular formula recently we developed how to represent chemical structures as a barcode like today when you go to the market and scan the qr code you transact the money so uh, almost 20 30 years back we uh, realized that importance and uh, we try to encode the complex chemical structures as a molecules so molecule containing 2000 atom now can be made as a single barcode on scanning it it automatically create the molecular structures to make it very convenient for input output to the computer systems we developed the barcode for um, chemical structure representation so chemical structures also represented as a two dimensional three dimensional and then searching this complex nature of these uh, molecules is very difficult because one chemical might have 200 chemical names for example formaldehyde it may have a trade name iupac name common name uh, many names uh, cas registry number many there are 200 names for a chemical structure so now you have to search 200 times or you have to search only once but representing all the 200 times that is where this representation of chemical structure is very very important in uh, in informatics so we i specialized in that field how to represent chemical structure which we can understand computer can understand and once the computer understand the chemical structure atom bond uh, the fragments uh, etc now you can calculate the uh, properties based on the graph uh, graph nature of the molecules so once you have the chemical structure uh, for example uh, chemical structure is a context so you have a data for example we know that this molecule is biologically active uh, and then for example paracetamol paracetamol is used for particular therapeutic category so the biological activity and then paracetamol as a chemical structure once you know this context that this paracetamol is linked to particular bioactivity then you build some knowledge like this there are several chemicals there are several bioactivity you combine them all there are several, huge data is there with respect to bioactivity and then chemical structure then you build the knowledge this is called inductive learning so you are learning from the molecule and uh, then uh, desired bioactivity and that become a knowledge so this is called inductive learning once you learned that now you know that cause now, if uh, I, I know that this is the disease, I want the molecule back. That is called deductive learning. So given your knowledge, once your knowledge is there in a model, apply that model on particular problems so you can predict what it would be the chemical structure uh, uh, required for curing that particular disease. Because you learned disease and molecule become a knowledge. And now you do the reverse that from the knowledge, you try to derive what type of molecules responsible for curing what type of disease. This is very, very simple principle. So data to knowledge and apply that knowledge to get the data back. So this is where this computer uh, AI, big data, machine learning, deep learning, all comes into picture. All the entire the uh, game, this game of AI for drug discovery can be presented with this one slide. I, I'm telling you, if you, all the participants can understand this one slide means the purpose of attending this seminar is fulfilled, actually. Okay, so now you know that chemical structures are very complex. Uh, they are, they are uh, represented in different forms. Now, once you know that chemical structures and the corresponding uh, biological activity are a property, once you understand that, uh, because you cannot predict the property directly from the chemical structure or images. So you have to translate that chemical structure in numeric format. For example, molecular weight, number of carbon, number of hydrogen, number of uh, whether aromatic, aliphatic, whether uh, ring present or not present. These are all called a description of the molecule. We call chemical descriptors. So once you convert the molecular structure in numeric format, how many numbers of carbons are there? So because computer can understand only the numbers and the property or activity or toxicity is another number so computer can make a correlation between number to number say for example y equal to mx plus c 
given series of uh, x, computer can learn, build the model, and then based on the slope and constant, it can predict the value of y later, given the value of x. It is same as here. So once you know that chemical structure, which is the molecular structure as x, and then property, which is the value y, and then learning from many chemical structures, which is x, now you can build the model. You will find the linear relation between variation in chemical structure responsible for variation in property using these numerical parameters called features or descriptor, whatever you call two-dimensional descriptor, three-dimensional descriptor. Molecule can be represented as a two-dimensional, so you can generate two-dimensional descriptor. If it is represented three-dimensional, you get the three-dimensional descriptors or numeric numbers. Once you got the numeric number and property is another number, then you use the AI technique, machine learning technique to make the correlation between your numbers of molecular structure with respect to your property, activity, toxicity as a model. So you can build three models, model one for property, then it is called QSPR. And then when you use activity, it becomes QSAR. When you correlate the chemical structure with the toxicity, then it is called QSTR. It's as simple as it is. Okay, so the chemical structures look like these atoms and bonds, which, which is very complex. This is a palitaxel, which is one of the anti-tumor compound. So from the chemical structure, you can you know that it is having specific anti-tumor properties. This is biological property. It might have some particular melting point, boiling point, solubility. So many parameters are there. This is also can be measured. So there are two measured parameters. One is bioactivity. Another is a physical chemical property which can be measured. And then you can also calculate the molecular descriptors, which I mentioned earlier, that your molecular weight, molecular formula, that can be derived from the chemical structure. So using this computational technique, you, you know that how to calculate the molecular descriptor or description of a molecule in numeric format. And then there are some experimental properties or experimental bioactivities which can be correlated so intrinsic property can be correlated with properties, then it becomes a QSAR. Intrinsic properties can be correlated with bioactivity, then it becomes a QSAR. And if you correlate this intrinsic property with the toxicity, then it is called QSTR. Okay. Once you understand this second slide, this is very, very important slide. Once you understand this, chemical structures can be represented in computers and you can derive molecular features that is called intrinsic properties. And this experimental data, you can collect from the literature, patent, publications, PhD thesis, etc. Because people take the molecule from nature, they do the bioactivity studies, then they publish. Okay. Now, once this information is available, you can make the machine to learn the correlation between molecular structure and bioactivity. And then, then it becomes a machine learning, deep learning, AI, yeah, you can call any name. So once you have the chemical structure, you can have, it may have some physical properties, it may have biological property, it may have a chemical property, it may have toxicity property. And then you can also use computers to do synthesis planning. You can characterize the chemical by, based on IR, NMR, mass spectrometric techniques. You can elucidate the chemical structure. Suppose you isolated a natural product. You want to know what is the chemical structure. So using IR, you can find the whether carbonyl group is present or not. Using nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, you can find whether it is containing benzene uh, type of structures or not. So using mass spectrometry, you can find the fragment pattern. So combining all the techniques, you can identify what the chemical structure is, which is extracted from the natural product. Say, for example, eugenol. Eugenol is coming from clove oil. So once you take the eugenol, then using this uh, structure elucidation, you know what the chemical structure, what is the functional group present in that molecule. Once you have these uh, uh, features, now you can, using computer techniques, you can correlate with property, activity, and toxicity. OK, so now we have. How much time? 15 minutes. Okay, so now let us go into how actually practically you can use AI for anti-cancer drug discovery. I'm going uh, next few minutes, I will quickly go through how AI can be used for designing novel anti-cancer agents. So now uh, in the newspaper, uh, this is a newspaper article, they mentioned that artificial intelligence and machine learning allow us to construct computational model that learn from known information about the target protein 
and infer the features required for corresponding drugs. This is what we discussed earlier. Cancer is a disease with a lot of targets. Now we need to have an anti-cancer drug to regulate. Then these molecules go and bind and interact with the uh, protein structures. These molecules are uh, interacting with the protein structures. Then it actually cure the disease. So uh, in textbook, they say that protein uh, target as a lock and molecule as key. So they say, uh, you know, lock and key mechanism or pair, different ways they represent. Traditionally, the biochemist or medicinal chemist know what are the functional group should be there in a molecule when they design. Okay, er earlier people used to know methoxy group should be there, nitro group should not be there, cyano group should not be there because they are very toxic. So like that, they know manually they can, traditionally they can design the molecule. Since the data is now coming very rapidly and uh, we need to build the mathematical model because we can't uh, humanly, it is impossible to process uh, 30,000 journals uh, published with uh, 15 million publications. You can't manually read all of them. So whereas you can use the computer to extract the information and build the mathematical model and build the knowledge base, from that knowledge base, you can design the best key. Okay, that is why uh, today you can have petaflops, very high speed computers, cloud computing, many, many technology, high performance computing, uh, you know, GPU computing. There are so many technologies are today available to handle large quality of data, large quantity of data and uh, speed we can handle with this computer technology. That is why people are, since the computer uh, processing is available cheap, the storage is available cheap today compared to earlier. You remember that uh, floppy disk which you used some 20, 30 years back. So I used the floppy disk for writing my program uh, in 1990s. Okay, then I put it in a floppy disk uh, in a postal things I sent to the conference and the floppy disk was received by the organizers and they installed the software, they evaluated, they invited me. So I spent 40 rupees for the floppy, but that contained three lakhs chemical structure uh, in 1990s. So that time uh, storage was premium, 1.44 MB floppy uh, cost 40 rupees. Today you can have a, a gigabyte of data in your mobile phone, laptops, etc. Terabytes of data comes in your systems. So uh, means uh, one uh, gigabyte means 1000 megabyte and uh, you know, one million megabyte equal to uh, that uh, million megabyte, terabyte, petabyte, like this now it becomes very, very cheap. Today, you can buy your one terabyte hard disk for maybe 5,000 rupees. Okay, so then how much data can be processed in drug discovery? That is very, very important. Now, let us go into the, uh, you know, uh, the component of AI in drug discovery. How AI, maybe you may be puzzled, what, how AI can help in drug discovery. So we know that these uh, protein targets, AI helps in target selection and validation, which target, which uh, specificity, selectivity. And then it also helps in identifying the compound screening. So there are huge number of compounds. Say, for example, pup chem, uh, you know, Kembel, they have biological active compound data databases and the zinc, which contains millions of chemical structures freely available in public domain. So you want to use this AI modeling uh, identify those molecules and see whether any anti-cancer agent is there hidden in that or for uh, means uh, hiding in that collection of molecules. So for that purpose also, you can do virtual screening using these compounds. So A is used in virtual screening, identifying the target specificity selectivity with respect to cancer. And it also helps in clinical trials, preclinical trials and several uh, form, several components are there. Specifically, with respect to chem informatics, we can build the mathematical model why the particular drug uh, and then why this particular disease selectivity and specificity. You can do that. And then there are several open source algorithms, molecular modeling tools are available that can be integrated to uh, understand the correlation between chemical structure and biological activity. And then uh, since the data is huge, we need natural process, uh, natural language processing techniques, data mining techniques, molecular mining techniques, and then people call QSAR. So these things can be integrated. This is how AI is used in drug discovery. Once you identified the molecule, 
okay, this is the best molecule. This is my magic bullet. This is my million dollar, billion dollar drug I identified using a analyzing 40 years of data. Now, the second question comes, how you will synthesize it? Who will synthesize? What are the easiest way to synthesize? And then what is the expected yield? Then you can use retrosynthetic planning by understanding all chemical reactions known to mankind and find out what chemical reaction can be used to synthesize those compounds. Later, once you identified the synthesis also, now people are coming up with robotics that robot will synthesize the compound and give you a few drops of chemical uh, using AI. So from conceptualization, identifying the molecule, identifying the synthetic route, actually synthesizing the molecule, everything is now, you know, uh, AI is doing. Robotics are doing that. So eventually, uh, that is the fear people have. Okay, maybe people will lose the job. The chemist will lose the job. People are using automation for synthesis of compounds. So let us go into the uh, drug discovery pipeline. There is a huge collection of molecules. And we know that uh, this information with respect to bioassay, for example, which molecule has desired bioactivity, uh, then uh, you know we can also avoid animal testing because of the cruelty and other things. There are a lot of activists. They don't want animal sacrifice for the drug discovery. But then we can sacrifice very few uh, number of animals. And then now FDA is also approving a computer-based model for toxicity studies using the known animal models okay so you, you already have uh, lakhs and lakhs of uh, data points use that model to predict what is the potential toxicity of that molecule uh, with respect to particular type of animal rat rabbit dogs uh, etc so you can use those models like msds data sheet when you say and you can see the what is the chemistry uh, what is the chemicals responsible for ld50 uh, lc50 tc50 this you know toxic dose toxic uh, concentration etc those information can be used for modeling and then this qstr model can be used and the same thing can be used for human also so basically you have a data you have a bioactivity now computer build the model and it actually predict and then it again goes to the experiment. So you can minimize the number of experiment. And then you are able to reproduce experimental data for the novel molecule. So in I believe in open source. There are several, uh, because commercial softwares are very, very expensive. Say, for example, Schrodinger, which cost about 20 lakhs rupees. So in the 20 lakhs, then whether I should buy chemical or should I buy uh, software. So I believe in open source tools so that open source tools have no restrictions. And then you need to have that much knowledge to integrate. There are everybody like Linux operating system evolved as an open source tool. Like this today in chemistry and biology, a lot of open source tools are coming up. So my job is to identify the best tool and integrate them such a way that I can build a, a tool that can be, you know, comparable with commercial softwares. Even it is sometimes, in some cases, it is uh, much, much better than a commercial software because there are certain situations where you can't use uh, uh, commercial software for multiple servers and computers. So when you develop open source tools, you can use in multiple uh, computers without any restrictions. Okay, so there are so many open source tools, uh, AI based computational tools for drug discovery already available in public domain. So I encourage the participants to look into some of these uh, tools. We used most of them for building the software. Now let us go into another five, 10 minutes. I will spend how actually used this concept, data and tools to build a toolkit. Okay, so now we know the drug discovery development, identify the disease, uh, then identify the disease, uh, you know, then identify the molecule, then you predict. So what are the technologies? The technology, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, uh, there are so many omics uh, with respect to cancer. And then we have to identify the small molecules uh, for that particular target protein specific to particular cancer. Okay, so now this, this is where a, a drug discovery, uh, computers are helping in drug discovery. So then it goes through some particular pipeline, identify the structure, optimize the structure, then find the structure activity relationship, build the library, screen them, and then shortlist them. It goes through uh, lead optimization, ADMAT properties, clinical trial, then it goes for a pipeline. Now uh, you can also uh, uh, you know, avoid 
animal testing by doing this uh, computer screening. So basically you are learning from the experiment and then you design the new molecule. Then you can actually stop the, uh, minimize the animal testing. So I, uh, when I developed these uh, toolkits, then I realized that, okay, so whatever I learned over a period of 20 years, can I put it in a textbook format? That is where this practical textbook, practical chem informatics book I written, because there are so many uh, chem informatics books available for theory, uh, explanation, etc. But uh, nothing gives the hands-on experience how to build your own toolkit. So then we put all the things together. It was in five years, uh, six years back, we made this book. Now the latest version, which will come in another one or two years, where these latest technologies will be uh, presented for um, specific re with respect to cancer, how to solve the problem with respect to type of cancer, type of, uh, you know, COVID or something like that. In future, what disease is going to come, we don't know. So how to design, how to prepare ourselves for those things. So then uh, these open source tools are, I'm, uh, I integrated in this uh, toolkit. So I already explained to you, there is a molecule, there is intrinsic properties. That intrinsic properties can be calculated using these molecular descriptors, which is, uh, we call descriptor. There are several types of descriptor, constitutional descriptor, charge descriptor, quantum chemical descriptor, drug-like indices, etc. Once you understand the molecule, then you can design the new molecule. This is where AI comes into picture. Then there is a lot of data is available in literature. So then we have to do the text mining, data mining to identify what is the gene, what is the protein, drug, and disease information. So what is the steps? First, identify the compound uh, in QSR model. Identify the compound, calculate the molecular descriptor, build the mathematical model, and apply the model to predict. Then there are a lot of questions comes into picture, which descriptor, whether what model I should apply. There are so, so many questions are there. Then you build the model from particular shape. For example, I built the model for breast cancer. Okay, I built here. I took some uh, 10,000 compound which are used in our preclinical trial with respect to breast cancer. Then I know from this 10,000 compound, I built a model for specific for particular type of breast cancer. So there are several type of cell lines are there with respect to breast cancer. And then for each cell line type, I built the model. Now. I have, I have a list of compounds which is not even synthesized. It is only in the imaginary state. Can I use this model to predict whether that compound are anti-cancer or not? This is where AI comes into picture. So you have the compound, then you have the descriptor, then you build the model, you validate the model, then you remove or add the descriptor, then you refine the model, you are able to predict the uh, bioactivity, which is experimentally validated. So then this is the observed value. This is the calculated value. Now you know what is the variation with respect to uh, this model. Once you are convinced that you are able to reproduce uh, your observed value equal to calculated value, then you can trust the model and apply this model on the compound, which is not yet synthesized. So you are able to see whether experimental versus predicted. So how much variation is there with respect to experimental data? So then we call that is a correlation coefficient R square equal to 0.8. That means 88% this model is good. So we can say that, okay, 12% it is not good. So then you have a virtual library of molecules. You can generate these new molecules, which is not yet synthesized. Computer can generate those molecular structures and pass through these QSAR models. Then if it is active, uh, if it is not active, you throw them, you discard them. If it is active, you can tell your friends, you know, synthesize it, biologically evaluate. This is how this works. So then we developed these several tools, uh, for example, a screening of the compound, identify the uh, molecules, then identify the molecular scaffold, then build the virtual library, and then screen against them. We used the entire PubChem collection of 70 million compounds, and then we identified about 8 lakhs chemical structures with scaffolds. And then the scaffolds can be used for re regenerating novel molecules by modifying the functional groups. So we can see the molecular diversity and different structures. Uh, then we can do the PC analysis. And then it goes through the pipeline to find out uh, which compound is a drug. So we have pharmacophore features, reactivity features, toxicophore features, chemo filters. So after doing all this filter, finally you come up with certain molecules which are likely to be uh, specific for a particular type of cancer. So these are the fingerprinting, we do it. These are all several uh, things which are in-house developed. It is not commercially available. So it is not available in commercial softwares. So we use these techniques for filtering the compound. 
and then we know which compound is for example green in this case or more pharmacophore based whereas the brown region is toxicophore so we can eliminate those compounds uh, that may be rejected or uh, withdrawn from the market if it is you know so how to identify the uh, failure candidates early stage using ai so then we can see the importance of this molecule how similar they are how different they are whether they are active they are inactive whether they are toxic non toxic all these calculations can be calculated measured so then we published some papers uh, how, what is the how to do virtual screening based on targets okay so this is the target screening now i will another uh, i take the permission of organizers to spend another 5 10 minutes to show the practical approach somebody can unmute and tell me can i go sure sir you can continue sir no problem uh, maximum 10 minutes i am really okay, sorry sir. Huh? no problem sir please continue please okay. continue sir. i hope uh, people are able to follow this uh, yes, now sure, i will go to definitely sir definitely yeah, please okay. continue it, sir yeah thank you so now i will spend another 10 minutes to show that how we put all the tools which we learned together to build this software so this is what practical approach is this is what we were funded by csir about 2.5 crore they sanctioned this project and then several people were involved uh, building the several modules of this putting together because of the corona and covid we could not uh, process further for publications releasing the software uh, filing the patent etc once it is done it will be available in public domain or for academics uh, it can be shared so that people can use this tool for solving the problem today we are focusing only on cancer but it can be used for any type of drug discovery programs so this uh, we try to add this ai mesh high performance computing data mining big data analytics so many components are there in this even we do patent mining see in patent the molecules are not mentioned uh, very straight forward they put some functional group r group they will say this r group is alkyl aryl so that you don't know exactly what molecule it is so they take they make one or two molecules uh, in experiment but they represent millions of compound in one chemical structure using r group or generic group so that it's very difficult to decode actual molecule in publication they put the chemical structure exactly but in patent they put the generic structure so it is very difficult to decode what specific molecule responsible for the specific bioactivity because they want to protect the by activity they want to sell the molecule so they don't want to at the same time they don't want anybody to work on this and sell the molecule so they intellectually protect the uh, this molecule so pa patent mining is very very complex with respect to chemical structures so text mining data mining which i mentioned so we have to do that to extract those molecule and by activity and putting into the system that is very very complex so we are able to do that with the help of this chem informatics tools in of developed chem informatics tools once you identified the chemical structures and by activity then you can do qsir molecular docking molecular mining molecular dynamics structure activity relationship you can use chem informatics you can use bioinformatics you can do phylogenetic analysis sequence alignment etc etc so one tool should do everything basically as a problem solving environment for drug discovery so then we use the same tool to handle 3 million experimental data uh, this actual experimental data for example breast cancer we have 186376 experimental data is there okay that data that means if you can't learn from 186000 experiment uh, there is no point in doing something blindly so already people spent 20 years to collect this much data so now can we learn from this to identify what are the molecule which is specific for breast cancer which is specific for cns cancer what is specific for colon cancer these are the top 10 uh, cancer types we identified based on the data availability whereas for small lung cancer we have only 29000 data points so we can say that okay data is not available maybe it's more complex maybe number of cases available with a small lung cancer is uh, small uh, then maybe the data is not published maybe some so many reasons maybe there for not making the data public domain so once we took this data uh, ic50 data ga50 growth inhibition factor ic50 ga50 uh, tc td50 uh, toxic dose 50 so there are several data points available with respect to this molecule on particular type of uh, cancer cell lines 
So this data, almost 4.4 GB data, which is only the numeric data. After that, there are several other data which we have to generate. For example, molecular descriptor, features, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then only it will have a value, a value to build the model and predict the activity. So all this data goes to the machine learning, deep learning, using several statistical methods, and then you build several type of models. So you are building several models with respect to type of cancer. So there is a specificity with respect to type of cancer and also a variation in model method, say for example, machine learning models and deep learning models. So we used around uh, 10 models, that means PLS model, uh, partial least square, KNN, random forest, decision tree, multilinear regression, uh, support vector regression, and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, RNN, LSTM, and uh, GRU. These last three, uh, neural network methods uh, and these three are deep learning methods and all the things uh, PLS, KNN, etc. They are all machine learning methods. So there are seven machine learning methods and three deep learning methods, which is actually when you say machine learning means you are teaching the computer. Uh, this is you know that. OK, so you, this is the supervised learning is called machine learning. When it becomes unsupervised, the computer itself recognizes the correlation and build the model that is unsupervised that comes under deep learning. So you should know very clearly what is machine learning, which is supervised learning, where you know this is a training set, this is a test set, etc. Whereas in unsupervised learning, uh, then it comes a deep learning. So you should know the distinction between uh, supervised learning, that is uh, machine learning seven methods, and unsupervised and machine learning method. So we can see that uh, 0.93 R square means it is 93.6%. It is accurate. It is able to reproduce experimental data. There are certain methods where uh, the, for example, melanoma and that method, the, it is very poor. Okay, maybe one that uh, melanoma targets and complexity and uh, correlation may not be correct. But there are some other methods where you can get very high accuracy. Many times people try to fit the data by eliminating the outlier compound that is very, very bad because then it will work only for two, three compounds only. Whereas we are trying to build the generic model so that it works for the entire spectrum of chemical space. OK, so because we don't know the person who is thinking about new molecule, what uh, molecule is thinking, we never know. So we have to build a generic model which is applicable here. Rather than giving more accurate results, we have to give workable solutions. First, we need to know whether the compound is anti-cancer or not. If it is anti-cancer, how much it is anti-cancer? So that much specificity and selectivity we need to have. So basically, given one molecule, you just design one molecule, you are able to calculate all type of cancers and all type of methods. So basically, when you give one molecule to the computer, it will predict 100 data points. That means 10 by 10, 10 cancer type and 10 different methods. Then it is your choice to select which one is good for your application. So basically, this is where A comes into picture. So you have a chemical structure. How we built that model? We have a chemical structure. You calculated the molecular uh, features or intrinsic descriptors, uh, intrinsic properties like molecular descriptors. Then you built the mathematical model, correlation between by activity and uh, data. Now you have the uh, you know models. Then once you have models, then you do the you generated the virtual library of novel molecules and pass through this model and then you say whether it is active or inactive. If it is active, it goes for synthesis by activity evaluation. If it is not active, there is no point in spending money, time, energy on those uh, failed candidates. We never know that one of the failed candidate may be by uh, you know, randomly, maybe by activity. But th this is a very fast way to screen large number of screening the compound. At least you can become a quick successor uh, in this story. So then we implemented this load molecules. Practically, we did this load the uh, 3 million data points to the computers and calculate all the molecular descriptors for all this uh, reaction, uh, reactivity, means by activity and uh, molecular structure. Once you built the molecular descriptors, two-dimensional descriptor, three-dimensional descriptor, then you build the mathematical models, seven machine learning method and three deep learning methods, then apply this model, training set, test set, uh, supervised learning, then you validate. What is validation? You are trying to correlate between observed versus predicted. 
uh, then identify the outlier don't remove them but try to understand why these molecules are not fitting into the model so that is also very very important sometimes uh, the molecules won't fit because maybe it is a natural product maybe it is some other context so it may not fit into the system but it is biologically active but you are not able to explain nowadays new technology is coming up explainable ai that explainable ai will tell why this molecule is working then it will also tell why this molecule is not working and which functional group responsible for bioactivity it can explain to you so this uh, this is also evolving okay then you have a virtual library of compound then you pass through the same process then you identify predict the bioactivity for novel molecule which is not yet synthesized so some time back almost 15 20 years back we published uh, using neural network how to predict the melting point of organic compounds so diverse organic compound ranging from 15 degrees celsius to 450 degrees celsius we took all the compound melting point of this compound and we were able to build the generic model so it is more than 150 citations uh, which is not our citation so it's very well recognized to work uh, it is a well cited work okay so then once we that is experiment that is that is the uh, property it is very easy but in bioactivity it is not easy because uh, melting point is one possible physical property whereas bioactivity uh, depends upon other 5000 target in your body so we have to identify the selectivity and specificity with respect to anti cancer then we took the drugs which is used for this uh, testing purpose from that we calculated the uh, scaffold functional group we built the math we built the virtual <laughs> library okay so uh, this is how you know what is lipinski rule of 5 because it is just uh, uh, Lipinski rule of five, which is based on some four properties. Can I continue? Uh, <laughs> I request all the participants to mute their mics, please. All the participants. I think they want they want conference with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay fine no problem uh, uh just one more two more minutes please okay, yeah. i'm almost yeah. near the yes sir yes sir continue sir sorry sir yeah so basically uh, what we do is uh, you know lipinski rule of 5 uh, what is the solubility what is the polarity what is the hydrogen bond acceptor donor etc which is just four rules how this was developed by lipinski because he took 50000 drugs he took 50,000 drugs and find the commonality for this, uh, you know, drug likeliness. But now in our case, we know that 3 million experimental data is there. We have to identify what are the functional group responsible for specificity of particular type of cancer. So we have huge, uh, you know, uh, you can say that uh, CCCTK rule of uh, 180 for cancer. I don't want to tell my name. It won't look appropriate, but we can say that software rule of uh, for cancer specificity and selectivity okay so now you understand this is the uh, you know uh, box plot where we can see uh, what is the this one plot will tell you exactly where the anti cancer property should be what this is the log p uh, log plot of that particular value so you know that each and every uh, plot every uh, data set represent uh, some uh, maybe 15,000 compound or 20,000 compound. For 15,000 compound in that particular property, this is the range. So now you can use that. Suppose this is one proper property X or property 1, which should be between 2.75 to 2. Minus 2.5 to minus 2.75 in that particular property. Whereas this property should be uh, in negative or this is a negative and this is a positive. So like this, you can identify, you can make your own rule. Okay. For example, in this case, you some sometimes people say the molecular weight should be in this range. So there are for this particular property, it can have uh, the most suitable one should be 70. The minimum is zero, maximum is 220. Uh, but then this is the activity range because most of the compound uh, comes under this category. So we can use this one as a filter to find out whether a new compound, com incoming compound, whether it is active or inactive, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, breast cancer like and breast anti cancer like or not based on this analysis. So we have so many parameters. So uh, just want to give you some flavor of how the software 
recognizes the hundreds of thousands of compounds come up with some criteria for filtering okay it is not yet published so now we put everything all the methods which i explained here into the software toolkit that toolkit this is where we developed the user interface this can have chem informatics bioinformatics genomics transcriptomics proteomics metabolomics text mining uh, it was 2017 and now we updated 2022 Uh, 2022 so uh, it is being updated daily basis yesterday also i implemented some modules here where we can use high performance computing given the list of compound it will tell uh, whether it is anti breast cancer or not if anti breast cancer which cell lines it is very specific what is how much activity it is so you given a molecule it can predict all these values so then you have several type of cancers then you need to have several modules are there here so this uh, flexibility is not there in commercial software you cannot modify anything in the software like you know your word document you have to use this word word you can write your content only you can't modify the software so here in open source you can modify the things so you have you can have explore all the 3 million experimental data for a different type of breast cancer mcf7 uh, type of cell line so what is the uh, these are all the chemicals with respect to cell line type so you know that Uh, for 4.83 for compound 1 4.75 for compound 2 and then the same compound will have different variation with respect to different cell lines excuse me sorry okay so now you know that different cell lines and different variation different compound so this can be visualized say for example ic50 value gi50 value you can see the variation okay so you can analyze the data and then you, you have different type of cancer types then you have different type of protein target responsible for type of cancer now you can also do the you know bioinformatics analysis uh, sequence similarity uh, local alignment global alignment and then you can use machine learning deep learning even open source tools like vika can be used for machine learning and then there are tensor flow which is used for deep learning purposes all is inbuilt in this software so instead of doing different different model one click you can calculate all type of models in one click because all are integrated in this system then you have a list of molecules from this molecule uh, then there are 20 servers are there and then there are about uh, 10 gpu servers are there so you have a cpu server and gpu server it can do in a distributed computing because when you want to screen millions of compounds you can't do it with one computer so you have to use in a high performance computing environment so given this molecule which you read in medicinal chemistry journal these are the molecules molecules are represented in the smiles format so smiles format means simplified molecular input line entry system so uh, what is smile smile is simplified molecular input line entry system because this can come as a question in your evaluation so please pay attention okay so these molecules are represented in a linear format each line represent one molecule we represent two dimensional structure as a linear representation so this uh, one uh, when say one and one it is containing one ring one one ring so when you said when you come across two that means this compound has both one and two that means two rings are present in this molecule so then you have a, a single ring containing compound two ring containing compound from that ring containing compound you can generate the molecular scaffold say for example chlorobenzene bromobenzene iodobenzene etc where benzene is a ring whereas chloro bromo iodo fluoro they are all functional group like this given a list of compound we are able to identify the scaffold and then replace the functional groups that is so we make virtual library of compound so these are the scaffold now you can say that r1 group that uh, what is earlier the ring there is no r group here now we identified these are the places this is the benzene ring containing some particular functional group r1 so you can keep replacing this r1 with some other functional group based on anti cancer properties then you can generate the virtual library these are the functional group so you know that this is a molecule source molecule from the journal and this is the function uh, scaffold generated in house developed method from that you identified list of functional groups and the scaffold from this you build the huge collection of virtual library of compound and new molecules which is not reported and then you calculate uh, you calculate the uh, progressive drug like score lead like score 
uh, drug failure, drug like failure, lead like failure, all the scores you know. From this, you can shortlist the compound, whether it is anti cancer or not. If it is anti cancer, whether it is breast cancer or not. If it is breast cancer for that particular cell line, whether it is active or not. Up to that level, you can go by doing uh, multiple. Uh, servers you can do in a distributed computing. So this is the, I don't want to go into detail because of the time is already, I shoot up too much time. So you can put all your drugs names, even the name to structure, then you put all the PDB IDs. It can do the docking automatically. It will generate the, it will do the docking studies. Uh, then it can find the binding uh, affinity for this compound. So it automatically do the Autodoc, Vina, and other uh, softwares in the back end in the server. It will do the automatic uh, uh, this binding studies. And then finally, you know, if our COVID, for example, here, even though it is developed for cancer, because of the COVID, we little bit tweak the software to screen the uh, compound against all the viral compound against all the viral proteins. Now we know that uh, this binding energy for then we can short list the compound, which is better. So basically, you can do the binding energy analysis, QSAR studies. Then we can use this high performance computing using AI. Why we have to do the docking studies? Because the ligand interact with particular receptor, and then it gives the response, which is uh, this is response is import, uh, responsible for your disease. So how to cure the disease means you need to know which ligand to which receptor to give the signal or pathway to cure the disease. So that can be in silico studied with the protein target and ligand. So you need to know what is the active site, what is the protein target, what is the small molecule, and then how to generate them automatically without manual intervention. So this is how this software is working. That is not possible with uh, commercial software today. Then we do text mining, data mining. And we then see I can that I mentioned to you 1993 when I was a student. I wrote about artificial intelligence chemical synthesis. Today, uh, last year, we managed to calculate three million organic reactions uh, in uh, in these systems because we used open source tools. So uh, from few few what I mentioned here, computers were used only for typewriting the typing the manuscript. To today, computers are used for designing the novel molecule and also tell what method to synthesize those compounds. So there are then you can use these uh, uh, 3 million reactions in a parallel manner. So you can see that 100% of all the computing things you can use it. Then there are open source data, for example, big data, 7 million compound, 1.7 million compound available in Campbell by activity. So I want the uh, teachers here you should encourage the students and you know encourage them when a chemist can do it pharmaceutical students or computer science students can do much better okay then we use these are the chemoxon technologies which we use we collaborate with chemoxon they give the academic license for us to develop the tools so one day it will see the light of the day where you may get the software through chemoxon or any other company which can license Okay, so now A is everywhere, A is listening. Uh, who knows, maybe one of the participant who is AI uh, tomorrow can, you know, develop a new molecule based on the molecule which I shown on the screen. So traditionally, you know, uh, this is traditional versus modern method. Uh, I'm almost completed my presentation. Uh, all the things which I discussed here are uh, available in this textbook and all the methods are already available here. I, re I recommend if you buy uh, you know, I get royalty, but if you download from some site, I get popularity. Thank you so much. Uh, I published all the things, how we use the tools, uh, back to back, uh, 10 papers we published, back to back in one, two issues of this journal. And we took most of the things as a patent. Uh, recently, we published a uh, novel drug like molecule, uh, identify the novel molecule from Indian medicinal aromatic plants. So yeah, it's a huge work. 104 plants, uh, you know, we identified about 2,000 molecular scaffold that can be used for virtual screening. That means you can design the nature-inspired uh, drugs for cancer or COVID or whatever. So that's all my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, for explaining in very uh, elaborate manner 
how this artificial intelligence is used in uh, drug discovery of anti cancer drugs now i request all the participants uh, if they are having any queries please ask this sir sir is ready to clear your doubts please unmute yourself hello hello ha ah, yes sir uh, please Go yeah, my Kartikeyan sir, the myself, Dr. Srinivas Reddy from Telangana. Okay. The artificial intelligence is applied in the diagnostics area. Is applied in diagnostics area, sir? Oh, AI is used in all sectors, diagnostics okay. texture, sector. For example, CTC. So, uh, circulating tumor cells. It is okay. also used in circulating circulating tumor cells, CTC. and it is used in diagnosis of cancer in terms of image processing everywhere what okay, i presented sir. is just a drop in version okay sir if we, if we applied in ai in diagnostic area but in instance the cancer is not detected why sir what is the problem behind that i am not getting sir can and, you come again and, because i am not a clinical person i okay. am a chemist okay. Uh, I am a chemist and I work with atom bond and computer programming. Yes, yes, yes. But in such cases, the applying A in uh, identification of cancer, there is no issues for the people. I am asking that. So someone can. Uh, I am not getting. Sir, can you please? Uh, can you please ask the question again, sir? Can you put it in the chat box yes. or something? Different, different. Sir, in such cases, we are we identify the cancer through A. in cell stage we identify the cancer through ai artificial intelligence for diagnosis correct yeah for, but no need to go for the third stage fourth stage most What of the I'm cases identify right. most you know, of the I cases identify yeah uh, most of the so, cases are identified in the cancer the fourth stage and third stage only yes Why sir not yes sir and second stage sir for example if i go to my slide okay the first yeah. slide i mentioned that the second point in the first slide was early detection and treatment is always recommended yes, yes people don't know how to recognize the cancer because one they don't know cancer is there they should go for preventive maintenance our bike we go for every 6 months train bus bike car etc but we don't yes. go for ourselves till we become you know bedridden yes very nice presentation sir yes very nice presentation so simple and sweet is okay thank you so much okay sir any other participant with queries sir is ready to explain madam i am happy to see 44 people are there maybe 50 people are there so, sir sir one more sir. question sir any workshops connected in, uh, in your uh, Institution, sir, in artificial intelligence healthcare system, any workshops in Pune? Oh, there is no uh, because <laughs> of pandemic. We can only available only in online. Maybe okay. next one or two years. Okay, okay, sir. <laughs> so physical, uh, we don't want anybody to enter. Today, I am not supposed to come to office because I can't present from home. Uh, I came to office to present. <laughs> okay, okay, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> वर्किंग वि प्रदेश and i was a one tamil person working with my professor because yes, yes. he came from hyderabad iict to ncl he came all with all the students so i know telugu okay chaala santosham sir roman andri thank you so much thank you sir for sparing your very valuable time hmm? thank you can we close now can i uh, just just talk out amina gadu okay amina gadu I have one question. Yes, Principal. Amina, can you? Ah, sir, sir. Ah, sir, sir. Please, sir. Sir, tell me, sir. Yeah. 
so i know your college is uh, close to masuli patnam yes sir exactly yes, yes sir so when i come to masuli patnam i will visit your college thank Definitely, you sir. sure sir <laughs> we are eagerly waiting for you sir right okay, it's an opportunity you. to interact with you sir <laughs> just like you are having so much of research work in the area of artificial intelligence and we are very much happy with your lecture the lecture is very crispy and having a sound knowledge okay and all the participants gave a very good feedback sir definitely we will be in touch with you sir thank you sir sir amina gar please uh, present a certificate uh, thank you so much sir kartika and sir for elaborating all the participants uh, about uh, use of artificial intelligence in drug discovery on anti cancer drugs uh, it was so informative and uh, uh, we hope that all the participants had gained a very vast knowledge of regarding this thank you so much sir on behalf of our management uh, principal and our staff members i thank you once again, once again sir thank you so much sir okay thank you very much nice talking to you thank you sir thank, thank you very much sir can i disconnect now yes sir sure sir yes, thank sir. you thank you so much sir thank you sir announce for next session uh, uh, all the participants are uh, informed that next session will start at uh, 130 pm and all are requested to join 10 minutes prior to that and it is informed that uh, session 2 feedback and assignment link is provided in the chat box any queries regarding this next session will start at 1:30 pm and uh, all the participants are informed that session 2 feedback and assignment is posted in chat box in teams okay thank you sir thank you kartika and sir thank you principal sir sir
Good afternoon to all. Welcome to the afternoon session of the ACT AST refresh program on role of artificial intelligence in drug discovery and development. Myself, Dr. K. Srikant Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, EV Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Kudlaval Nehru. I would like to thank Dr. V. Lakshman Rao, Coordinator and Principal of VV Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And I would like to, it's my pleasure for being as chairperson for this session. Now I introduce resource person of this session, Mr. Barani Kumar D, CEO, Managing Director, 360 DZ TMT Hyderabad. And SAR is the alumnus of ISB and IIT with over 15 years of industrial experience. And SAR has more than 80 years of extensive experience in training of data transformation and data management. And SAR is the implementer with abilities in business analytics and quality management and project management, etc. And SAR possesses excellent communication skills as capability to explain difficult concepts in a very lucid manner and SAR successfully delivered more than 60 big data analytics engagements and SAR trained over 4,000 professionals across the globe and coming to the professional credentials of Barani Kumar sir completed various technical and management international certifications like PMP PMI, ACP, CSM, CSPO, Lean Six Sigma, DSDM, Tableau, etc. And SAR worked as a chief data scientist in various organizations HSBC, ITC, Infotech, Infosys, Deloitte, Anthena Technologies, and Medley, Med, and Six Bridge, etc. And SAR acts as visiting faculty in Indian School of Business and Watson Business School. And now I request Parani Kumar sir to deliver the content related to the applications of artificial intelligence in pharma. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, everyone, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for the chairperson and thank you, Dr. Uh, Lakshman Ravaru, for having me here. Uh, first of all, am I audible? Can you all please confirm on that? Yes, sir. It is audible, sir. Clearly audible, sir. You are not visible. Yeah. Sir, can you... Yeah, yeah. And <coughs> the reason I'm not visible is because I have connected using my GPU machine, graphical processing unit computer, which doesn't have any uh, camera resources in it. So that's the reason. And also, I was just uh, infected with COVID on uh, Saturday. So I'm okay. still on the due course of recovery. Okay, sir. Please so, take care, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, sure, sure. Absolutely. So I'll share my.